Hello, I'm Ricky Martin, YouTube's answer to the question nobody asked. And this is Earth's Sketchpad, where we draw everything from nature together at the same time. Like this. A Komodo dragon smashing up a model village. And this has been drawn by Oliver, who is 10. So is that fire coming from its mouth? Lovely flat head, always getting that flat head and that great wide gate. Look at it. I love this dragon's expression. It is so chuffed with itself. Right, let's make some more. So Earth Sketchpad is where I draw creatures causing chaos and all the ideas come from you. It could be a raccoon crashing a kid's birthday party, it could be a pigeon pooing on someone's head or it could be a tortoise skateboarding down a ramp wearing sunglasses in space. We have the dodo from the week before from the week before sunbathing on the moon. It's really easy, just get your adult who pays the bills to share with us your bonkers idea using Instagram or Twitter and the hashtag BBC Earth Sketchpad and they will land in my lovely ideas tin. There's one now. Via the beautiful BBC Earth Kids YouTube team. Say hi to them. We're a bit thin on the ground this week because uh, Chris is trying to fix his hair after the debacle he had at home. Um, there's Jeff up there in the corner, the OMG, the one man gallery. Give us a wave, Jeff. He's, um, his hair is recovering very nicely as we can see and we hope the rest of his hair has a speedy recovery. Right, those guys are going to be on my ear giving us loads of animal facts and telling me where you're from. Right, it's time to pick a creature. This one. And that is... <gasps> okay, I'm taking the animal from this, but there's a pretty fun chaos in there as well. Uh, this is from Jonah, and he would like a fox. Excellent suggestion, Jonah. I'll get right on it. Right, let's get some music going. That's backwards. That's better. Okay, I'm gonna be drawing a red fox because um, it's my favorite, right? I like a red fox. Uh, now red fox are considered to be the most widespread carnivorous animal on the planet. They are on nearly all the continents of the world except for Antarctica. Now you can get Arctic foxes, but I guess that would be in the Arctic. Okay, little snout to its head, black nose. And their mouth, I think, is quite low on the muzzle. It's like quite down here. All lines either side there, up to an eye. There are lots of red fox species, uh, and most of them have a white tipped tail and black socks on their feet. Big ears. So yeah, I'm having him looking back like that. Now foxes have whiskers on their face and on their legs and it helps them navigate. I guess it, whether or not they can see if they can fit through a hole in a fence. Just gonna add a little white patch under the chin and down the front of the chest. So these whiskers that are on their legs and on their face can help them track prey. They can feel the vibrations in the grass, say a little mousies on the log. Feel that. Then they go and eat it. Hang, hang. Now foxes can eat loads of foods, they're not fussy at all. They eat frogs, worms, uh, pizza, uh, mushrooms, burgers. They are really not fussed at all. Which is why you find a lot of urban foxes in cities. Because there's lots of rubbish around for them to eat. Pause, and I'm going to draw in little black socks on these ones. On the back. And they're getting onto its legs and its tail. This tail is super important. They use it as a blanket. They can help them balance and to communicate with other foxes as they wag it when they've met their family members or people they haven't seen for a long time. Big tail. fluffy bit on the end. So foxes belong to the canid family. So they're kind of dog-like. They've got the teeth. 
And in fact, a male fox is called a dog fox. Whereas the females, they're called vixens. And they have cubs, fox cubs, which they look after in dens, which are little underground dwellings that they dig. Just add a couple of fluff bits in here, little details. And foxes are quite verbal. They can make up to 20 different types of noises to have their little foxy chats. All right, there we go. That is a fox. Now it's time to put this creature into some chaos and we would love to hear your chaos. Just get your adult food bringer to share with us your chaotic idea via Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag BBC Earth Sketchpad. Right, I'm going in. In for this one. This is from Charlie in Bristol. Now he would like a dolphin doing a magic show, but we're gonna steal the chaos and pop this fox into that situation. Thank you very much, Charlie. All right, let's get some new music going. It's backwards again. Better. Pop it over here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of artistic license here. And if he's doing a magic show, I guess this fox is gonna be standing up. Got rid of his tail there, but I'm gonna pop it back in. The tail is, of course, called a brush. So if you ever think about any famous foxes, that might explain why they're called that. Nice long neck, and of course, I'm gonna have him wearing a bow tie because he's doing a magic show. He wants to look nice and smart. One arm down like that, paw. Maybe holding on to his jacket. Just so this beautiful dove can fly out. He's got quite a lot of tricks up his sleeve. In fact, a lot of people say as sly as a fox. Why do they say that? It's because they are intelligent and cunning. There we go. Put some sunglasses on him, I reckon. There he is, and the other one would be holding a magic wand as he is a magician. So I'm taking some creative liberties here and I'm giving this fox an opposable thumb. Well, he is magic, isn't he? Oh, little legs. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I think he'd also be wearing fancy shoes. Wants to look a bit taller, with zips down the side. That's pretty cool. And nice big bushy tail. <laughs> right, he's a magician, so let's go have a magician's hat. Let's just pop that there. Nice big one. It's enormous, actually, look at it. And it's just on a tiny, very short bench. So there's obviously nothing could be hidden underneath it. It's not gonna be a trapdoor or anything. Okay, little sparks. We'll get to that later. And over here will be one of his previous tricks, which didn't go right, but you know, the show must go on. Just a pair of feet there, sticking out of a box. Because, yeah, you've guessed it. He's uh, sawed somebody in half uh, and hasn't put it back together again. And this guy's like, Oi! Put my legs back on! These are all males, casters. There we go. A couple of cards flying around. Obviously just all aces. Magic. Magic. 
Uh, a couple of audience members here just watching in. Ooh. Little top knot on that one there. There's only three people watching. Not a very good magician. He's made his entire audience disappear. Uh, let's pop in a little curtain at the background there. Curtains are super easy to draw. Just do lots of vertical lines and just have the bottom like almost like little rectangles just overlapping over each other. This guy's pushing through the curtain here. It's been taken out maybe by uh, an assistant fox here. Can't see the outfit, but it is um, a onesie. <sighs> what should the fox be pulling out in the middle? Let's have a little look in here. That's right. It's our friend the dodo. From not last week, not last week's, but the one before episode. Just appeared, bosh, right in the middle there. Real happy. And he's got with him his favourite driver. Because he's a golfer, this guy. <laughs> oh, Dodo. You look amazing. A couple of stars on that curtain. And there we have a fox doing a disastrous magic show with guest appearance from the dodo from not last week, not last week, but last week's episode. I suppose you could say that foxes are actually a little bit magic. When they pounce on their food, say it's hiding under some snow, they actually align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. What? To help them target. That is magic. So there we have it, a creature in some chaos. We'd really love to see your creatures in chaos. Check out all this fabulous art we've been sent. If you'd like to share your work of art with us, simply get your adult minion to take a photo of it and pop it on Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag BBC Earth Sketchpad. And now it's time for the secret sketch. So this bit is dead simple. All you have to do is grab a pen and paper and draw along with what I draw. But only I know what the drawing is going to be. And by the end, you'll have a beautiful work of art that you didn't even know you could do. Uh, so, BBC Earth Kids YouTube team, do you have your pens and paper at the ready? Yes, they do. Jeff's jumped around. What are you doing down there? You're not allowed down there. Right, remember, to draw along, you don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to give you a few clues along the way. But hopefully I'm going to throw you off too. So let's get some music going. Oh my days. There we go, right. So, I'm going to throw you off right off the bat. I'm going to start with the bill. So a little curvy line like this. Back on itself, up to a little point in the middle, and like that. Is it a duck? It is not a duck. And then, do you know, if it was a duck, these would be wings. But this at the end here has some quite tasty claws on the end. And then another one round here. Look at those big old claws. So this is because this animal is very good at digging. In fact, it can dig under the ground during forest fires. A little clue to where they're from. Is it a mole? Hide, so they can hide from the flames. It's not a mole, but I would say they are as good diggers as moles. Is it an aardvark? It's not an aardvark. Nope. These guys are as good at swimming as they are as digging as well. They're as good as ducks. Right, I'm going to start adding some little little spikes here. A nickname for these guys is the spiny anteater because they do like eating ants. Here's a really big clue. It's one of two warm-blooded creatures on Earth that lays eggs. 
Duckbill platypus. It's not the duckbill platypus. I love platypuses, they're really cool. See, that, that little thing underneath it, that's its other claw like that, because their hind ones face backwards. Loads of spikes, even though these guys aren't in the slightest bit related to hedgehogs. They hang out in Australia and New Guinea. What was your guess there, Jeff? Yay, Jeff's got it. I'm not gonna tell you where it is though. So this little nose on them that we call the bill is super sensitive and helps them check for vibrations to find food. Got all those spikes. You'd be forgiven for thinking they're like hedgehogs. So a bite from one of these guys wouldn't really hurt because they don't have any teeth. But they do have a very long tongue. They can be up to 18 centimetres in length. Let's put the little eyes in. Very cute see little eyes. Sorry, I'm just gonna add a little shadow. The wonderful Echidna. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, BBC Earth Kids YouTube team, how did it come out for you? Oh, wonderful stuff, love it. So we'd love to see how your secret sketch came out to just get your adult minion to do one more thing over the cooking and the cleaning and share with us your secret sketch on Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag BBC Earth Sketchpad. And don't forget to put your name. And that's it. Don't forget to check out all of the other awesome content on the BBC Earth Kids YouTube channel. Bye-bye.